Hi, I'm Dr. Mahima Bakshi and I'm a woman in child business consultant and author of the book Birthing Naturally. I'm going to talk about birth preparation for expecting couples during the COVID-19 national lockdown where staying at home is what is recommended for your safety and hence uh, it definitely must be tough for patients to prepare themselves for uh, the birthing day and must be getting very anxious because they are unable to attend uh, antenatal classes at their respective hospitals. So to ensure that we take care of uh, all our expecting couples for the uh, for the, the, the due day when their baby is going to arrive into this world, um, I'm going to share some tips with you on birth preparation. Number one, most important is the mental preparation. Yes, I understand that a lot of expecting moms are going through a lot of stress and anxiety thinking about what is going to happen, how they will uh, be able to reach the hospital for their delivery and how the whole birthing process is going to get affected with this uh, COVID-19 outbreak. So most important is moms must not freak out have to stay calm and relaxed because currently the stress and anxiety that you will go through can definitely affect the baby so you have to learn to stay calm and relaxed so I'm going to advise you to practice some breathing exercises relaxation exercises at home and do uh, at least 15 minutes of meditation in the morning so what breathing exercises can help you the first one is called deep abdominal breathing that also helps you for labor. So we also refer to it as the Lamas breathing can, that can be used during contractions in labor. So for Lamas breathing or for deep abdominal breathing, you have to take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Once again, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Now as you exhale, remember it has to be first lip breathing. That means that when you're exhaling, you have to try to purse your lips as if you're trying to blow off a candle. So once again, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Now this has to be combined with the right kind of abdominal movement. So as we call it the deep abdominal breathing, your abdominal movement has to go in sync with your breathing. So as you inhale through your nose, let your lower abdomen rise out. So you can, pl you can place both your hands on your baby, inhale through your nose, let your abdomen come out and as you exhale, let the abdomen go in. So your focus, your concentration has to be on the movement of the abdomen along with your breathing. Remember, inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth and the movement of the abdomen will be as you inhale, the abdomen comes out because you're taking in more oxygen and as you exhale, the abdomen goes in because you're trying to release all the carbon dioxide from your lungs. So around 5 to 10 minutes of your breathing exercise along with some calming music will help you to calm yourself down and the same kind of breathing can also be done during your contractions when you're in labor. So this exercise will help you not just to keep yourself calm and relaxed during pregnancy but it will also prepare you for labor. Now the second thing is is what uh, is basically how to prepare yourself physically. Now to prepare yourself physically for labor you must have uh, seen that all the doctors advise that you know patients must go out for walking because walking is a very good exercise in pregnancy however yes right now walking is definitely strictly a no-no for uh, not just the pregnant ladies but everyone because right now you have to stay at home to stay safe so uh, since the walking is not possible you have to focus on other physical exercises that you can do safely at home to prepare yourself physically for labor. So that's where all the labor exercises will be very beneficial for you. Um, I will be showing you all the exercises that you can do at home safely in your third trimester to prepare yourself for labor. So, 
squatting exercises can be done 30 weeks onwards provided that you don't have a breech baby it's not recommended if the baby is breech so for squatting you need to give shoulder width gap between your heels your toes pointing outwards arms stretched out and your back straight and now we're going to bend the hips down till about 90 degrees so these are 90 degree squats so if you can see i'm bringing my hips down and up so during squats it's important that you keep on breathing remember do not hold your breath so again i'm going i'm first going to breathe in while going down, exhale. Again, inhale. While going down, exhale. Once more, inhale. While going down, exhale. So the back must be kept straight. If you try to do your squats like this, this is absolutely no. It's a wrong posture. The right posture, you have to keep your back straight, bend your knees outwards and go down. So while going down, exhale, up, inhale. So 10 squats, 3 sets, 10, 10 times each will be good enough once in a day. Full squats can be done in which you have to go completely down. So first breathe in, while breathing out, go down and up, inhale. Down, exhale. These are your full squats. So again, ensure that the back and the posture is maintained. Do not bend your back too much. Try to keep your posture correct. Inhale, exhale. And again, this can be done 10, 10 times. 3 sets, uh, 10 repetition each will be good enough once a day. So the ball bouncing exercise, it helps in relaxing your pelvic floor muscles during labor and it also helps in speeding up the process of labor. So ball bouncing during contractions can help in relaxation. This can be done with your breathing. So focus on inhalation through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Now you can do the circles. So big circles, moving the pelvis. Let's do this with breathing. Inhale, exhale. So you can do this clockwise. Make sure that you maintain a good posture. So I'm keeping my upper back straight and only focusing on moving my pelvis to move the ball. Inhale, exhale. Now we can do opposite side. One. And two, three, four, five. So you can do this exercise 10, 10 times in each direction. Now I'll do the front and back tilts. So as you move front, you look up, inhale, and bend forward, look down, exhale. Two, three. and five so again this can be done ten times and now we do side to side so you just move your pelvis left to right inhale exhale keeping your upper back straight inhale through your nose exhale through your mouth Now we can do this with the side stretches and bending. So moving the upper body towards one side. This is the side bend, the side stretch. You feel a stretch in your thigh and on your sides. Inhale, exhale. And the other side. Inhale, exhale. So again, this can be done 10, 10 times each side. And Move back to the bouncing again. So the bouncing on the ball can be done as a warm up and as a cool down. So we can do this with breathing. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. And relax. Now you can move both your hands up above your head. Interlock your fingers. Stretch your arms up. Hold this position. Inhale, exhale. 
So this will help in correcting your posture and in stretching your muscles. Again, this can be done 10 times. So all these exercises are the ball exercises and this is what we refer to as the birthing ball which is very helpful in labor and it helps in actually it acts as a natural pain relief technique so ball exercises during labor really helps you in taking control over the labor contractions in terms of controlling the intensity of the pain naturally. stuff in the market right now is uh, a little task and a challenge because a lot of shops and the malls have been temporarily shut down so it's important that you try to buy everything in advance so that you ensure that there is availability of everything related to your baby or yourself in advance with you at home in the hospital when and as needed so i'm going to share some tips with you on what all things you can buy and keep your keep with yourself that might be required related to the baby or related to breastfeeding so number one is a set of clothes for the baby a full body suit or a romper set is what is generally used by most of the moms so you can buy uh, probably four to five sets of full body suits or rompers for newborn babies uh, you need socks cap mittens at least four to five sets because you might change it at least twice a day for the baby so considering the availability for minimum at least three days uh, then you need a baby blanket, you would need a swaddled sheet, also a work cloth, baby towel, a soft towel for the baby and a set of diapers for the newborn baby. Um, it's better to use some organic or rashery diapers these days and baby wipes, some, some cotton, you would need some maternity pads for yourself, a feeding bra which is very important which should be non-padded and non-underwired and needs to be one size bigger, it should not be tight. You would need some olive oil which will help you for breast massages, which also helps in lactation and a backup of a breast pump which might be needed, might help you in case you develop breast engorgement or in case due to any reason if the baby is unable to feed or empty the breast. So these are the essential things that you would definitely need other than this, a sterilizer, if you think it would be needed or a lot of people also prefer to sterilize uh, the equipments in the kitchen that's your personal choice and uh, water feedings are definitely not recommended anymore by the WHO hence therefore a silicone palander or a feeding cup can be handy in case you need to give express breast milk to the baby so these are the things that you can prepare for yourself and your baby in advance and you can make a checklist and start marking and uh, prepare it in advance because the last minute uh, you know uh, immediate uh, buying would be very difficult because most of the markets and malls are right now shut down so it's better to keep all these things at home in advance and bring it along to the hospital uh, when you come to deliver so that if in case anything is needed you have the availability right there with you now I will talk about the preparation of husband which is your birthing partner so your birthing partner has to be very well emotionally connected with you because uh, your partner is going to be somebody who's going to be present with you during the time of labor uh, after labor and with you during those three days when you need the maximum support so emotional support is the key factor is the, is the major uh, uh, support from the partner which helps in uh, enhancing and encouraging the ability of, of a woman to deliver naturally. So it's important that your birthing partner should be emotionally very supportive and should encourage and motivate you to let you know that you're not going through the whole process alone but yes the partner is also there with you. So emotional motivation and encouragement is number one. Number two, your physical support. So in terms of physical support, the partners can help the wives do the exercises in labor, remind them to do the constant breathing.
breathing, the deep abdominal breathing. Most importantly, a uh, pregnant mom during labor should not hold her breath during the contractions. So the husband can help in reminding her constantly to focus on the breathing rather than holding her breath. Number three, the partner can play some soft calming music. So you can prepare a collection of the uh, tracks that you would like to listen to should be soft calming music during labor and the husbands can ensure that they play that music uh, for the wife so that it helps in, in relaxing the body, in distracting the mind from the contractions. Then comes labor massages which is really really effective to an extent that actually a lot of moms get so relaxed and uh, it helps in, stimulate, in stimulating natural endorphins in the body. So for labor massages, uh, better, definitely better, you should avoid touching the core area of the mother because it depends upon the pain intensity that she is going through. But uh, as of now through this uh, uh, video session, I would like to advise you to just try soft calming massages on the shoulder, your upper back, your hands, your arms, and uh, the foot so these spots can be safely touched because right now I uh, physically can't teach you the massages to be on a safer side your upper back massages I'm repeating again neck massages arms hands right and foot massages will help in releasing natural endorphins in the body which can help till quite an extent for you to uh, take control over the pain in labor. Um, as we all talk about gender equality in today's time, even for parents, it's important that once a baby comes into this world, the responsibility is equally shared. Your little one has a huge expectation from not just the mother but also the father also the grandfather and the grandmother and the other family members as well. So it's important that the entire family plays their own respective roles in terms of sharing the responsibility in taking care of not just the little one but also the mother of the little one. So I'm going to share some tips for couples to understand how the responsibility can be shared especially during this period where everyone is at home and finding helpers or maid servants to take care of the new mother or the baby is actually a challenge right now. So parents can ensure that once the baby comes into this world, the responsibilities are shared right from the first day itself. Husbands can take the role of changing diapers. They can help in calming down a crying baby, they can sing lullabies to the baby and they can help the mother in terms of breastfeeding by taking the responsibility of burping the baby. So it does not mean that once the baby comes into this world, it's only and only motherhood that has to ensure that everything goes fine with the baby. Fatherhood is equally important because we are living in an era of gender equality. For responsibilities to be shared, it's also important that the husband and wife share a good bond with each other as well. You need to avoid arguments and fights around the baby because remember, we want to create a positive environment around the baby, not just when the little one arrives, but starting from now on, even when the little one is inside the bump. So you need to build on your own relationship as well. Your emotional support towards each other has to be there. So it's, it's actually a give and take relationship where not just the husband, even the mother, uh, even the wife needs to be understanding uh, towards the partner that yes, everything is new for him as well. So it's not that he comes with a learning experience about taking care of little babies so you need to ensure that you don't indulge in unnecessary fights related to the baby. Now waking up at night when the baby demands feed so it's a natural phenomenon that babies demand more feed at night because even the mother makes more milk at night so most of the times you will see that the baby 
uh, is awake more at night as compared to the daytime. So the night um, waking up responsibility again can be shared between the two of you. So you can divide slots probably like for example maybe the first half at night one of the partners can stay awake when the baby is awake and the second half the other partner can. So you can share the night responsibilities also with each other. Now uh, you can also look at it as a positive way that the lockdown phase most of the husbands are also working from home so they can't now give the excuse that they have to wake up early and go to office and that's why they can't help the partner. So yes the night duty is to wake up when the baby demands feed or when the baby cries or when the baby needs a diaper change or also when the baby is just born the partners have to share the responsibility of that as well. The baby bath and baby massages generally is not recommended until the cord stuff falls off. So it's advisable that you discuss with your pediatrician before starting with any sort of baby massages or baby bath. Until then, a simple sponge bath is enough. The feeding pattern and the feeding responsibility Again, definitely WHO recommends exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. But even in terms of feeding, when the baby is gassy or when the baby is a little cranky, the fathers can help by taking the responsibility of helping the baby take a burp. So, burping is something that definitely we advise the fathers to do. And one last thing, which is really helpful in building a stronger bond with the baby, both for the mother and the father, is the magic of skin to skin. So yes, babies love skin to skin so much and it also helps in uh, making the child feel more emotionally secured. It stimulates happy hormones in the body and it also helps in calming down the crying baby and for mothers it helps in enhancing lactation. So the baby has to be placed directly in contact with the parent's skin on the chest. The baby is kept directly on the chest, covered from behind and there's no layer between the baby and the and the parent so it can be done with the mother and the father and a direct skin to skin contact is made which helps in transferring the body heat it so the baby recognizes the smell of the parent and it also helps like i said it helps releasing happy hormones in the body as well so parents can ensure that uh, in the pre-delivery phase they prepare themselves together during labor they labor together and even after delivery they share the responsibilities with each other and they step into parenthood together so this really helps in also preventing postpartum depression in new moms so moms don't feel that they're into it alone and especially for first time moms when everything is a new experience uh, sharing responsibility is very important so uh, it also helps in preventing postpartum depression, so it's also good for the mental health of the new mother. So I recommend all all parents, the new parents, the expecting parents, parents-to-be to ensure that they provide their maximum, maximum support, not just towards the child, but also towards each other. So parenthood is definitely a responsibility that has to be shared together. So... These are the tips for uh, couples who are trying to prepare themselves for labor, especially 32 weeks onwards and, and this is when you need to start mentally and physically preparing yourself for the D-Day, for the arrival of your little one and uh, most importantly again I would repeat a lot of moms I hear are really panicking thinking about how will they manage in case they are unable to attend such classes so these kind of videos will be able to help you so you can share it with as many expecting moms that you know. Thank you.